Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So in case you don't know, um, I've always been able to offer a little bit of assistance to people that are having a rough time with their experience. Um, we had a Gaetan for quite a while who would try to help people through uh, some of their bad experiences. And now I um, advise people to reach out to TJ Neely. Uh, he's more available. I think uh, Gaetan is pretty busy these days. So TJ uh, has been gracious enough to uh, try to help people through. He's got a lot of experience. Uh, he has his regular sites. Uh, he's published his own book, which he's working on a second one now. He's had experiences with the big three, as he calls them, Bigfoot, Werewolf, and Dogman. Uh, lots of amazing information in his book, but I digress. Um, so recently I got a story from a lady by the name of Roxanne. Now, Roxanne has sent us in, I believe, three stories now. Um, episode 199, episode 210, and then the last one, which is 287. The last one is really thrown Roxanne for a loop. Uh, she didn't know what to make of it. So I recommended that she reach out to TJ. Um, I couldn't think of anybody better because I suspected she might be having a little bit of dog man activity going on. Although I am not a researcher, I just read your stories. So I thought it would be best for her to reach out to TJ. Now, the two of them have given me permission to read their banter back and forth so you guys can get an idea of what takes place when something like this happens. Oh, also, I just want to quickly point out, both uh, TJ and Gaetan are both military men and actually had uh, encounters while they were in the military. So um, it's fair to say that they both, between the two of them, have a fair amount of knowledge about this stuff. And that's why I feel um, that they're a good source to, you know, go to for help. Okay, I'm going to stop yakking so I can start yakking. Okay, this is the conversation between Roxanne and TJ. Hello, Mr. Neely. I was recently referred to you by Leslie at Cryptids Canada. My experience began in the winter of 2020 and ended in the spring of 2021. I have lived in Greensboro, North Carolina since 2004. I live in a townhouse community within the city of 300,000 residents. Greensboro has swaths of wooded parks and natural areas, one of which is between our home and the elementary school. The land belongs to the school. Once the school switched to remote learning in March of 2020, the woods became dense and were no longer maintained. Months passed with no one at the school and even less car traffic on the main streets, which surrounded our development. My companion is a 120-pound gun dog named Truman. Truman is unflappable. He's a Weimaraner. The breed is a hunting dog. No barking, just all sensing. We get deer, fox, rabbit possum and the occasional coyote popping out from our wooded area. Our first notable experience came when I took Truman outside for his evening constitutional. We stepped out onto the deck and Truman froze where he was. His hackles were up, tail was between his legs and his eyes and ears were focused on the woods. I noticed there were no insects or frog noises at all. My ears felt pressured, much like being underwater. My hair turned to wire. We returned to the house. With the exception of two nights, all through the winter, we went out to absolute quiet and creepiness. The dog would be riveted to the woods, 
jumping as if something was closing in on us. I felt what I thought was a zap at the base of my spine. On those occasions, I said the Lord's Prayer out loud and led Truman back into the house. On the occasions of the audible prayer, we heard tapping on my bedroom window, followed by a slap on the side of the house, the actual wall where my bed is situated. The very first time was followed by something on my roof. It sounded like a man walking on the roof. My window is about 10 feet off the deck. North Carolina has Sasquatch, Dogman, Black Panther sightings, and honestly, I thought we might have a big cat until I felt the physical reactions. Every morning, Truman was sniffing all over the yard and into the edge of the woods, as if something had been outside in the dark. At times, I was so spooked, I actually took the dog out the front where it was oppressively quiet too. For some reason, I kept scanning the woods and high into the trees. Spring came and poof, everything went back to normal. I never found a footprint or any other signs. I have a satellite dish on my roof and prior to the first slap experience, the wires to my dish were taut and secured to the siding. After, they were slack and loose. I am prepared for winter's return, and I have trained the dog to go outside at dusk and remain in the house until dawn. I'm not fearful beyond thinking that there is a predator after Truman. I am on the list for my electrician to install motion detector floods. I have had three experiences with Sasquatch. This feels nothing like them. What are your thoughts? Sincerely, Roxanne. And I'm going to leave out her last name. And this is TJ's response. Hi, Roxanne. Thanks for reaching out about your experience. I'll do my best here to shed some light on such a dark topic. The longer our generation, sixth of man, continues to exist, so does theirs, and it also means population growth. They follow the water and food supply. Some are forever nomadic, meaning they are always transient or traveling. They migrate north in the spring and south in the fall. Some will hold up in areas where they feel safe and all their needs are met throughout the year. These become what we call habituation situations, where humans and hybrid hominids end up sharing the same real estate for years, sometimes decades or even lifetimes. North Carolina is a beautiful state, but also falls on the east side of the Appalachian mountain chain, which is considered a major cryptid migration highway. These creatures love to work through the green belt at night because there is a, usually a good food source. The larger the population is of a certain predator in a given area, the more competition there is for the food source. Once that source has been depleted, they'll usually move on unless something else has caught their attention, like domestic animals or people. You are so lucky to have Truman, so trust in his instincts in every detail. He will alert you and protect you. When you step outside into that dead zone and you notice a specific smell or scent on the air, if so, then please describe it to me. Also, change up your routine, like you did to where all your activities were done during the daylight hours. The night belongs to them, so be careful. Trust in your senses, too. Keep ears, eyes, and your nose working at all times. The times when you feel electric charges or static means that they are close and you need to go indoors. Some of these creatures operate at a much higher energy and frequency level, so sometimes you can feel it. Yes, motion-activated floodlights and some trail security cams with infrared night vision serve as great deterrents, so get some. These creatures can see the infrared light and will shy away from some that will take their pictures, and you may get a picture of your culprit by accident. That should keep them away from the house. 
As for what I think it is without investigating it myself, it could be any one of the big three. I hate to say this, but the government has a breeding compound there in Virginia, just above where you live, and these creatures are always coming and going. Yes, I address this in my book. They started the werewolf breeding program in 1952 and the dogman program in 1954. The Bigfoot never did well in captivity, so they were released. So that program never happened, yet. In addition to the breeding programs, the government-funded science community has been trying to genetically engineer super soldiers for decades and created monsters instead. When the funding of these programs are cut and they can no longer support the effort, instead of euthanizing the population, they are just going to release them out into the wild. Yes, our national forests. This is why it's a big secret. If the truth is made known, it would be incriminating. So please be careful and trust yours and Truman's instincts, as Truman may be the one on the menu one night. They do not fear man, but they do fear man's weapons. They also know if they start killing us, they will be hunted down into extinction. And the government already has that organization up and working overtime too. I hope this helps. TJ. Now back to Roxanne's response. She says, Back in 1956, we lived in Carmel Valley, California. I would wake in the middle of the night when there was a full moon, and I would stand on my bed and look into the backyard, which was enclosed on three sides by the dense woods. I called what I saw those nights King Kong because of the size. It would stand there swaying at the tree line, looking my way. I told my dad I didn't want to play on my swings because of King Kong being back there. He spoke to me as though I was an adult, asking questions. My swing set was moved to the front yard, and we ran front floodlights all night. I don't recall ever playing outside as long as we lived there. My dad was a naval officer, native of Northern California. During the Depression, his parents signed him up for the CCC camp in Mount Shasta area. When I was college age, we had a talk about the three knocks and screamers he heard while in CCC. He also told me he thought my visitor in Carmel Valley was a Sasquatch. I saw something huge on a Fognac Island, Alaska, when I was in the fourth grade. It was 1987. Something came up to an open bedroom window, pressed in on the screen and huffed and sniffed. It was late at night and everyone else was sleeping but me and our basset hound. Molasses was shoved under the bed, shaking. The smell was god-awful. I have never smelled anything like that again. Sweat, feces, B.O., etc. made my eyes water. That was in Sedona, Arizona. The next morning, I had a look at the window screen. It looked like something had licked it. Dust had been displaced where I think it had pushed at the screen, like a huge hand. I smelled and I heard nothing last winter, not even a twig snap. I felt something was watching. Thank you for your answer. I'm, I'm ordering your book tonight to gain some insight. Thoughtfully, Roseanne. Now back to TJ. Hey, Roxanne. That's awesome to have so many encounters with these creatures since your childhood. Think of it as a gift for even one of these creatures to show themselves to you because they do connect with very few human beings. That just goes to prove that these things have been around for a very long time. and We're supposed to look the other way and discount their existence altogether? Remember, the government doesn't care about what you know. They only care about what you can prove. And that is when the men in black swoop in and take all your evidence and tell you that all you saw was a bear. Laugh out loud. 
I can remember back when I was eight years old playing with two buddies down by Cibolo Creek in San Antonio, Texas. We were following the creek and came around a bend. There was a huge hole carved in the bank of the creek. The whole time we were down there, we felt like we were being watched. Well, we soon realized that it was a cave that went way back, maybe 10 feet, and then it hooked to the right. Being native kids completely unaware of the dangers out there, we all crawled back in that cave. Luckily, it was empty, but we could tell that a big, musky, urine-smelling dog-like animal was living back there. Knowing what I know today, we had actually crawled into a dog-man den. Yup, I know what you're thinking, but we were just kids and didn't know any better. I have only told this story to a few people, so consider yourself special. I have a ton of stories that will make your skin crawl, but I consider myself lucky to be here today and able to share my experiences with the world. My book was a primer into the big three and a tell-all of what I have learned from personal research as an independent Sasquatch research team, which is ISRT. It's a fascinating world in which we live. Folks need to know that there are some bipedal critters out there that deserve our respect and consideration. After all, we are all earthlings and share this beautiful planet together. Signed, TJ. And then TJ sends her a second email. So, Roxanne, during the times when you and Truman were out on the deck or in your yard, when this was going down, you said that you didn't smell anything unusual. Did you have any additional senses, notions, a feeling of intense dread, fear, or danger? Thoughts, messages that said you're not where you belong? Maybe you should go back in the house, don't step in the yard, or even come over here to see what I am. Just from what you have shared, and from what I know, I would narrow it down to either a dog man or a rogue male Bigfoot traveler. Some of those Bigfoot can be very aggressive, and with you being a female, they have been known to loiter around certain locales. They do not like dogs because they serve man as the best alert system there is. I have had hunters tell me that these creatures will intentionally kill their best hunting dogs in front of them and then walk off just to prove that point. The one thing that you must understand with the dogman type is that they tend to run and hunt in packs of three or more. I am more afraid of them because they are completely unpredictable and intelligent and efficient killers. Signed, TJ. Then, Roxanne writes, I was very confused because I experienced absolute fear, like my whole body was zapped. I started reading your book with Chapter 6, Other Cryptids, because when all of this started, I didn't think Bigfoot at all. My two childhood experiences did not scare me. The one that terrified me was Sedona. My mind was thinking something predatory, and I kept thinking it might be a mountain lion that had observed us on the aborted walk earlier. I thought one had focused on my son, who was six months old. It wasn't until I saw the window screen the next morning I changed my mind. When the tapping on the window started, then the slap, I thought Bigfoot, but something went on the roof. We almost always walked out into the dead zone. I'm big on noting things on a paper calendar. Two nights during those months were normal. I also heard what I thought might be a pup in the woods in one location. Do you think a female might have had a pup away from the pack? I'm convinced it's gone. Something odd I noted. We normally see rabbits, squirrels, and chipmunks everywhere. Come spring, nothing. Just birds. To answer your question, absolutely no odors, no growling, 
just intense fear and no thoughts other than my own mind telling me to look up on the rooftops and into the big pines behind me. My dad taught me at an early age not to carry myself like prey or a victim. When I was outside, I carried a long hiking stick. Hope this answers some of your questions, Roxanne. Back to TJ. Roxanne, while you read my book, please keep in mind that it was written at the end of 2019 and edited in early 2020 for publishing in July of 2020. So it was pre-election. There is some predictive material at the end that I think has played out well, and I also do my best to tie a lot together to help explain what they don't want to disclose and why. I would welcome your critique, and don't forget to provide a review on Amazon. I'm just sharing with what I've learned and know over the course of 36 years of independent research. People have a right to know about what else is out there and roaming around in our national forests and neighborhoods that our government is trying to keep hidden. Like I've always said, a secret can't be kept a secret if the secret doesn't want to stay hidden. Laugh out loud. Signed, TJ. And then we're going to move on and go to Roxanne. I'm curious, how do you stand on portals, etc.? I frequently view Steve Istall's YouTube channel, the facts, howtohunt.com. Today's video was titled, When the Sasquatch Tag You. The subscriber is military and has multiple experiences with invisible predators in Angola. There is also a subscriber handled Owlman who is indigenous and made some interesting comments about Bigfoot in yesterday's video. I had been a Can-Am Missing Project viewer. He has discussed the invisible predator angle too. Just curious, haven't read anything in your book yet. I apologize if it's in a chapter I have yet to digest. Regards, Roxanne. And then... TJ answers, everything George said on Steve's channel about tagging is true, but it is not new information. It serves as a confirmation and validation. I love it when data from different sources overlap and validate each other. Many researchers have known about all of this since 1990, but did not have a platform to disclose to reach the masses other than writing a book. This explosion of cryptid channels has happened just recently in the last three years or so. The operative term is bioregistration, where these creatures can read the distinctive atmosphere or quality that is naturally generated by an individual, and it surrounds each and every one of us. It has everything to do with our aura, energy level, frequency, varying patterns and intensity, spiritual plane, basically contributing to our overall resonance factor. Not everyone is the same. They know who is a threat and who's not. So it has less to do with being tagged and more to do with registration and identification by what you emit and or radiate. I say this because we come in contact with many of these creatures over time and they can all make an on-the-spot determination as to the in individual quality of a human being. The best thing to ever happen to this topic is the explosion of YouTube channels like Steve's and others that can broadcast this information out to the masses so we can learn and become more aware more quickly. Signed, TJ. So guys, that is an example of what can happen when you reach out just to, you know, uh, clarify stuff that's gone on in your life, and things you're nervous about, you don't understand. Uh, this is why, don't, don't hold it all in. This is, the help is out there and all you have to do is ask for it. Uh, if you can't get it from other channels that 
offer it, then, you know, reach out to me and I'll try to get you the help that you need. Okay, guys, you know I love you. Have a great night and hope to see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.